My name is Sri Amor. I'm a pianist. What you just saw and heard was the performance of the evening slided by the glow of the composer Claude Debussy. If you're familiar with his music, he may have reminded you of his famous Claire de Lune. Even those of you who are not familiar with Debussy's music probably thought he sounded like the title, The Evening Slided by the Glow of the Coals. He may have even struck you as a bit romantic, but here's my question. Would you have listened differently if you had known this backstory behind this piece? This piece was not publicly known until the manuscript was auctioned in 2001. The title comes from a line of a sensual poem written by a French symbolist poet, Baudelaire. And it is probably the very last piece for piano written by Debussy. And he didn't compose this for his publisher, but for his coal merchant. Due to the material shortages resulting from World War I, Debussy desperately needed coal. So he wrote this piece to thank his coal merchant in a special way so that he could encourage the merchant to deliver coal. And at that time, he was also suffering from the cancer, which eventually led to his death. Given this context, this piece becomes much more than something pleasing to your ears. What it reveals is that Debussy managed to retain his unique wit and aesthetics despite all the adversities he faced toward the end of his life. You know, think about this, using a line from a sensual poem for the title and arrive in a piece called The Evenings Lighted by the Glow of the Coast for his coal merchant. What a wonderful way to show his commitment to beauty, don't you think? Context creates room for listeners to savor the nuance of connection and meaning. Today, I'm here to talk about a new approach to concert programming as a way to offer a new kind of musical experiences. You will also hear how context and evocation play a role in the process of such programming. I believe a recital is a space in which an artist can offer not only the opportunity to be moved by music, but also be engaged and enriched across broader areas of experience. With that in mind, I have been performing programs in a way that invites contemplation and that also allows listeners to experience music at a deeper level through highly nuanced interactions of music and carefully chosen themes. Let me start by sharing a few examples of my programs. As If Heard From Within is a program I performed back in 2016. The audience members listen to the music in the dark to experience listening from within. The program consisted of two sections and each section ended with a piece related to mirrors because when we listen from within, in a sense, we mirror ourselves. The audience couldn't get distracted by the program notes or whatever they had because they were in the dark. They had no choice but to be immersed in the music and then also in the act of listening. Beyond Darkness was my very first pre-recorded program I shared with the public to invite listeners to imagine what may lie beyond darkness. This theme came into my mind because of the darkness we were living through due to the pandemic. And then also the fact that we were approaching the spring equinox, which signifies the equal amount of darkness and light. It was an attempt to initiate nonverbal musical conversations with listeners on this theme of imagining what may lie beyond darkness while being physically away from those listeners. So what goes into the process behind such programming? In order to offer a space for listeners to experience music at the deepest level, I always make sure that I build a program with two pillars in mind contextualization and evocation. Let me start by sharing uh, some details about my latest program, Beyond Darkness. With B 
beyond our press, I want to reach and touch listeners in a way that is different from a standard recital experience by blending the elements together. For example, the carefully selected repertoire placed in a certain order to communicate the depth of darkness and also the process of moving away from darkness, the quotes that communicated the theme, the backstory behind Debussy's work, which you just listened to, including poetry reading in the original French, the images is designed to communicate the theme, the special lighting effects, and then also the timing of the program premiere, which was the spring equinox. In other words, the context was provided in a way that is not possible through a live performance. It was possible to blend those different elements together only because it was a pre-recorded format. In a way, it's similar to cooking. We combine and cook multiple ingredients together in a certain way. And at the end, what we have is something transformed, something more than just those different ingredients put together. The art lies not only in how we select ingredients, but also in how we prepare and blend them together. And when we enjoy the cuisine, it's not just about the sense of taste. It involves enjoying the fragrance, enjoying the visual presentation, texture, and maybe even the sound of the food. So we use multiple senses to appreciate and experience the cuisine. And I believe artists can also stimulate all the senses of listeners through such contextual blending when we offer a musical experience. Now, the second pillar, evocation. In my programs, I always want to leave room for listeners to do their own thinking and make their own connections and interpretations so that they become part of the creative process. In Beyond Darkness, I wanted to, um, the, the audience members were invited to imagine what may lie beyond darkness and come to their own conclusions. And I never suggested what they should see at the end of the program. And because of this freedom, the audience members were able to become part of the creative process, which contributed to a deeper musical experience. I must say, the role played by my collaborator and filmmaker, Nick Hughes, was crucial in order to bring this concept of beyond darkness alive. And this is how he describes his creative process. Hi. My name is Nick Hughes. I'm a filmmaker based in Baltimore, Maryland, and I had the honor of collaborating with Rie on Beyond Darkness. Going to a concert is a really magical experience. You're in a concert hall surrounded by other excited people, all experiencing this amazing thing happening in real time right in front of you. When I'm filming music, I'm not trying to recreate that experience because it's impossible, but rather I'm trying to create a different experience altogether. And I'm utilizing elements like perspective, lighting, camera motion, and editing. These are things that don't exist in a concert, or at least to the same degree. I could put the camera right up close, allowing you to see the expression in a performer's eyes or the nuances of what their fingers are doing during a technical passage. I decide exactly which elements are in light and which elements are in darkness. And I also have control over the camera motion or whether the camera stands still. The most profound difference is probably in editing as I'm deciding how frequently to switch between different camera angles. And in a way, I'm becoming part of the performance and engaging in this sort of dance with the performer and the timing of the edits. I have to be careful when I'm making all these decisions uh, to not distract the audience, but draw them in. I try to make all of my decisions intuitively and subconsciously rather than overanalyzing everything. Uh, because it's really important that the video becomes a vessel for the music rather than a barrier to it. And so striking that balance is really where a lot of the challenge lies in this type of work. You can see the intimate space Nick was able to create in the program. In a way, it is more difficult to reach and touch listeners in the virtual environment because we are not physically together. But because of his approach to filmmaking that conveys nuances through lighting and his intuitive and sensitive reaction to music, we were able to create this evocative space in Beyond Darkness. This collaboration with Nick Hughes will continue. And one of the collaborations is Decaying. This is a 
pre-recorded program for piano and violin on the theme of finding beauty in what is decaying. Audience members will be invited to experience this theme from three different angles, scenery, thoughts, and physical existence. Before the program premiere, I will solicit artwork that ex expresses this theme from the community and share such artwork so that we can create a space for contemplation on this theme of finding beauty in what is decaying. Another uh, collaboration is a soft and forgiving color. It is a pre-recorded program for a short story and piano. It's meant to be a dialogue between a writer and a pianist on the theme of innocence and poignancy. J.R. Ryan, who is an exciting writer, wrote a short story in response to the music I will perform in this program. I hope we will be able to offer a new kind of experience with a story and music blended together for audience members. Now, before I end my talk today, I would like to also share two quotes that serve as the guiding light for my programming. The first quote is by David Emanuel, one of the greatest violinists from the 20th century. And he said, each human being has the eternal duty of transforming what is hard and brutal into a subtle and tender offering, what is crude into refinement, what is ugly into beauty, ignorance into knowledge, confrontation into collaboration, thereby rediscovering the child's dream of a creative reality incessantly renewed by death, the servant of life, and by life, the servant of love. The second quote is by living composer, David Froome. And he said, some people dedicate their lives to saving this world. We try to make this world worth saving. While contextualization and evocation are the two creative pillars of my programming, these quotes are the guiding light that really drives what I do. Now, why do I care so much about offering music in this way? It's actually much more than just about music. I care because there's something very human about embracing nuances, something subtle, something implied, ambiguous, something undefined, unvoiced, something we cannot fully explain or quantify because this world can never be fully grasped through a dualistic black and white lens. Life is never that simple, don't you think? And we are complicated beings, which gives us headaches and heartaches from time to time. But it is these complexities and nuances that add richness and depth to our lives and make our lives worth living. I will continue to offer music in this way to explore such places filled with nuances. Thank you so much. <laughs>